We are currently on the test server, guys. In today's video, we are going to take the new duo, the new powerhouse couple coming to Raid Shadow Legends for a spin. We're going to see what they're made of and if they are living up to the expectations. A lot of us had high hopes that they will be a good counter to Marichka and Taras. Now, people misunderstood the whole idea of this couple being a powerhouse. They're not here to replace Marichka and Taras. Uh, I don't think many, many champions in the game will be able to do that. But they are here to offer us an alternative on how we can deal with the problem. So they are here as a solution. Hopefully, it all depends if the new Void Legendary can actually hit hard enough to kill them before they're constantly healing. You know, so that's the whole uh, the whole idea. With Queen Ancora, she is the fusion champion. We have her built on a stone skin, and the kid guys. If you quickly want to have a a bit of a refresh. Attacks an enemy has a chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally by two turns. If a uh, uh, weak king Narciss is on the same team and has any active skills on cooldown, decreases the cooldown of one of their skills by two turns. If he is on the same team and has no active skills, decreases the cooldown of a random ally instead. If the cooldown of a skill is fully reset, uh, you're getting a healing as well. The A2 removes all debuffs from all allies. Places a shield buff on them equal to 25% of this champion's max HP. And places a strengthen. If uh, with King Narciss is on the same team, then fills the termiter of all allies by 10%. She's actually interesting for Hydra, Hydra clan boss as well, guys. She's definitely not bad for that content. And my only, only problem that I have, I really had higher hopes with her being great for the Sand Devils Necropolis. Unfortunately, the affinity is just killing her for stage 25. Because... Force versus magic is just not going to end up good. Then we have the revive skill. Revives a dead ally with 50% HP and 75% Termiter. Resets the cooldowns of the revived ally skills. If uh, Wheat King Narciss uh, is on the team, revives them with 75% HP and 100% Termiter. After the revival decreases the Termiter of on, uh, on all enemies by 10%. And if uh, the King is on the team, decreases the Termiter by 20%. Instead, and these effects cannot be resisted. Now, if you don't have him on the team, you will require accuracy for this for Arena, for example. And you have the passive. Whenever an enemy tries to place uh, one of these debuffs on the ally with the highest crit damage, transfers uh, those debuffs to this champion instead. Fills the termiter of this champion by 50% if this champion misses their turn due to one of these debuffs. And if uh, the king is on the same team, uh, she will actually remove all these debuffs at the start of her uh, turn. So it's actually nice to be able to uh, save your uh, champion with the highest crit damage, you know, very, very nice. Speed aura for all battles. So we have 102k HP, 4k defense, 295 speed. I have one with accuracy, resistance, or anything else. And uh, in terms of masteries, I have defense and support tree. We have timely intervention as uh, tier 6. We're just going to get more termiter when our allies uh, uh, lose HP. We have uh, stat fast. We have a uh, shield bearer because she is uh, giving us a shield. Cycle of magic always uh, comes in handy. Lore of steel. We have uh, lasting gifts uh, to increase the duration of buffs if, if we can, of course. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, uh, we have a cycle of revenge too get more termiter then with king narciss i gave him the gear from my taras okay do not get uh, overwhelmed by his stats guys because we are trying to see how well he compares with the other ones if i'm gonna give him weaker stats i won't really get to understand what's his full potential because i'm not using any of the rest of the champions in that gear so i try to give him the best possible gear that i'm using on taras as well so i can have a bit of an idea in my uh, in my mind and understand what's his uh, full potential savage and crit damage set total stats we have uh, 115k hp 3.5k defense 249 speed full crit rate 281 crit damage keep in mind these champions have no blessings either they're not empowered so of course once you're gonna get them up and running with that they will become more powerful too more stats and uh, they will gain like a, an extra extra secret move. Then master is on him. We have uh, offense and defense. Ham smasher as tier 6. Keep in mind, uh, sometimes when he's using one of the skills, the masteries will not come in effect. Like Heart of Glory will not come in effect. Single out, uh, bring it down. These masteries will not increase his damage 
on uh, the A3, if I'm not mistaken, right? So with the A1, attacks one enemy, has a chance of randomly increasing the cooldown of one of the target skills. If uh, the queen is on the same team, uh, he doesn't require accuracy. On the A2, attacks all enemies, will ignore 25% uh, of the target's defense, and places an extra hit on targets under shield or strength and buffs. This is a very nice touch because we are living in an era where uh, shield is the meta, okay? Bolster set is everywhere. And actually, it's for the A2, not the A3, my bad. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be decreased by enemy passive skills or masteries and cannot be increased by his masteries either. So was the A2, not the A3. On the A3, attacks one enemy two times, increases the damage inflicted with this skill by 10% for each buff on the target, stacking up to 50%, and by an additional 10% for each buff on this champion, stacking up to 50%. If this attack kills a target under three or more buffs, places a block revive debuff on uh, the enemy. So you gotta let him buff a bit in order to make sure you're gonna block the revive. Also, if the queen is on the same team, he uh, gains an extra turn if he kills an enemy. The passive, he will receive 50% less damage when attacked by enemies, including bosses and their minions, out of their active turn. If the queen is on the same team, he will receive no damage when Taras will counterattack, for example. And this champion skills will ignore shield and strength and buffs, which uh, will have no damage reduction when he's using the, the A2 HP aura for all battles. But enough with the talking, guys. Let's take them in for a spin. First, we're going to take them in the Dragon Slayer stage 23, just to understand a bit the damage. Uh, keep in mind, it's not really going to show you the full potential in here because it's not something that you will encounter in Arena. But as an idea, we're going to see a bit how he kind of like compares with other champions that we are bringing on this stage so she's buffing we're gonna put defense down and uh, and weaken the problem that we have right here is that the enemy has no shield has no strengthen so with the a2 the aoe attack we won't be getting a double hit but in arena if they have all this is conditional we're going to deal double the damage of this if we have the same debuffs on the on the target so 132k 116k twice basically on the same enemies if they have the right uh, the right debuffs they will be great for a lot of content guys in my opinion uh they really meant to to shake a bit the arena you know and uh, that's my hope with uh, with these two two champions um i think i will try them in hydra i will try them in other content as well for the next few days but today we're uh going to focus on pvp okay that's my main focus for uh, today with a couple and if she's using the A1, decreases the cooldown. Of course, it's not 100% chance, but hey, when it procs, it procs and it does help. And because we got no skills on cooldown, she actually gave him a healing too. So right now, if we would have a lot of buffs on us, a lot of debuffs on the enemy, uh, a lot of buffs on the enemy, sorry, we're going to increase uh, our damage. And if they have three plus, uh, three plus buffs, we will block the, the revive, you know. Extra turn because she's on the same team. And now we can move over to the... To the aoe skill so the damage is decent i don't think it's going to be at the level of taras but that's fine as long as we are able to kill taras and marichka with them uh, i'm more than uh, more than fine with it so let's uh, refresh the page find some uh, some new teams in here and we're slowly gonna pick up uh, a few a few different uh, different teams in here so let's see do we have a marichka and taras i have a marichka here that's the problem with the with the test server, man. I feel like not many people have uh, have the stronger uh, the stronger champions, or they don't put them up uh, up in here. Okay, we got we got somebody with both of them, and they're both of the couples in here. Both of the couples in here. We're gonna take Raman to out. I want to bring in more buffs, and I can go with Cardial or I can go with uh, Sifi. Hmm. Let's go like this. Let's go like this. They will have some buffs anyway. Bolster. Oh, no bolster on nobody. Okay, that's that's a bit uh, a bit weird. I'm still gonna lock them now. Okay, we gotta find a better team that has bolster because everybody runs bolster in uh, in the higher uh, higher end arena, you know. So we're gonna buff now. We have two buffs on him. We're gonna put more. So we have five buffs. So right now with this skill, we basically stacked all the damage that we can gain uh, from having extra buffs on the on on the champion. Now because they have no. Uh, no buffs on. I won't be able to block the revive. But we're going to attack uh, Marichka. Bang. She went down just like that. We took no damage. We took no damage. Look at that how good it is. Look at that how good it is. And now we're gaining an extra turn. And we're going to do one hit. Now Taras and his passive won't, uh, won't stop us from dealing good damage. 
Shame they don't have Strengthen and Shield because that would be double the damage with no mitigation as well, you know? And the, the other two just went down like, uh, like they were butter, you know? Now, I do think that his builds are not strong enough for, uh, for the build that I have on him, you know? Uh, we're going to try to find Victor Tess or somebody else that might have something similar because I know his gear is kind of like at my level. Okay. So we managed to, to get that down pretty nice, pretty nice. Now with strength and, and shield, because we ignore them anyway, we're not going to have damage mitigation, but we're going to deal double the, the damage. So let's see, is he a fast champion? Or what do we have in here with Victor Tess? Sifi, we have the, the mythical champion and the new banner lord. Ooh, she, oh, oh, baby. They were fast, they were fast. So let's do this. But you know what's the thing? He's going to counter attack. Or whoever is going to counter attack in here, it doesn't really matter because we're going to take no damage. We're going to take no damage just for the simple fact that uh, uh, if the counter attack one is not their active turn, it just doesn't count. So we have quite a few buffs on, on her. I have quite a few buffs on me, so the damage should be maximum from this skill right now. Let's see. Okay, we ignore the shield we, uh, and he ha she had no strengthen. So the damage was decent. The damage was de uh, decent. She had increased defense too. So we're not ignoring all, uh, all of the defense. She survived. She's probably very, very tanky. He fully healed the team back. What I'm waiting to do right now is to use the AoE once the block damage will go down on all of them. There we go. So that's, that's down. Uh, we're going to attack Sifi. Sifi again. So no more block damage. And now I should have the... A2 available, but no shield or strengthen on Sifi, unfortunately. So let's see. We'll ignore 25% of the target's defense. Let's see the hit. So one. Ooh! And then the second one only on the champion that still had the shield because Sifi didn't. That's actually pretty nice. She's definitely going to revive right now, as expected. Let's put him to sleep. And I kind of want to attack somebody with a lot of buffs. Block revive. One. There we go, block, revive, down, extra turn, down, A1, and now we're going to deal with Sifi. So honestly, I do feel that the damage is uh, not insane like Taras, and not to overhype the champion or anything like that, but personally, I'm a fan, and it will be much better to have some stronger teams to be able to kind of like uh, attack. With, uh, with them to, to get a better understanding. I know Victor Tess has some very, very crazy gear, so uh, seeing this, how it works on, on him, I'm actually not, uh, not disappointed, you know? Another revive, that's fine. I'm not trying to do speed runs in here. I'm trying to really, really pay attention to what the champions can actually do. So right now we can decrease the cooldown. There we go. And now we can uh, just use the AoE again and wipe them, uh, wipe them off, you know? So that is actually pretty good. 466 thousand damage guys definitely very very nice like look at the healing that uh, uh Asselin, uh had 338k pretty damn crazy okay we have strengthen we have shield in here very curious to see what we're gonna we're gonna do in here i'm actually gonna gonna go like this we're gonna take yumeko out we're gonna take yumeko out okay so we have one stone skin on cupidus we're gonna we're gonna buff i want to let him buff as well you know Okay, come on. Oh my gosh, she's so slow. She's just not buffing. Okay, so we're gonna go A1. 44k hit. And it's so nice to ignore the shield with every single skill because it's a passive. I love it. Everybody has strength and everybody has shield. Ooh, we just lost all our buffs. I didn't thought about that on Venus, you see? Okay, so I have three buffs. Four buffs with that shield now. That Cupidus is, uh, is going to kill him, which is fine. So right now, we're not ignoring ally protection, okay? We're not ignoring ally protection, but let's see this skill. Cupidus has so many buffs. Boom, block revive, he's down. Not like it matters, because we just gained the extra turn, and we're about to wipe the rest off too. There we go. That's actually awesome. Narciss, King Narciss, putting in some serious work. Honestly, I'm, I'm liking them so far. I'm liking them so far, and the good part about it is Dealing with Rotos too. Now, of course, we have UDK in here, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a different situation. But just uh, let's just bring in the the solution to him, you know. So we're gonna 
Polymorph, you get out of here. We're gonna increase a bit the Termiter buff. And right now we're gonna try to see if we can kill that Rotos. One, two. Okay, we haven't killed him. He did have the uh, Ward of the Fallen on, which is bringing in a lot of damage reduction on, uh, on that champion. But right now we can actually go in with, uh, with the A2. Because they have Strengthen, they have Shield from Mitrala. So I'm curious to see if we wipe them off. It's such a good counter to Rotos as well. Such a good counter to Rotos as well. One, two. Get out of here. Get out of here. Narses pulling in some serious work. Let's see what else can we find in here. Warlord, that's going to be a bit of a problem. That's going to be a bit of a problem, unfortunately, because we will get locked. And honestly, I have no, no solution for him at, uh, at the moment. Let's refresh again. So we tried him. We haven't tried Farb stuff with the tanky Ursega. But she has the passive, which he ignores with uh, his A2. So I want to see this in action too. I think it was bad if I was bringing in a... If I was bringing in a, a Yumeko instead of him. But we're going we're gonna to polymorph that. Okay. So we're going to cleanse. Put some buffs, some Termiter. And right now we can go in with the AoE. Now, my main thing is that I could get reaction on uh, Candrophone and on Ursega. So let's see. One hit and two hits. I don't think we got reaction on Ursega. I haven't really, I haven't really saw it too clear, but I don't think we hit reaction. We're not going to remove buffs. We don't want to do that because we want him to go in with the A3 now. So Duchess has no buffs. And uh, what we could do instead is to actually just go in and uh, attack Duchess directly. Put her to sleep. Uh, I can block revive on the rest, on Ursega or... Yeah, I can block revive on Ursega. Let's do that, actually. One, two, block revive, extra turn. And right now we can move over to an A1 on Duchess. 24k, we increase the cooldown of her skills. We don't need accuracy to do that either. We managed to land a, a cheeky stun. Decrease the cooldown of his skills. Okay, let's put it on 2x speed because it feels like it's in slow motion. It makes me, makes me feel sick. <laughs> oh, why did I remove the buffs? I'm supposed to click on the other one. Okay. Still, we wipe them off. We wipe them off with the King Narciss. I wish, I wish I could find the Marichka Taras team in here, but it seems like we don't really have a... We have MTG. Anybody at all, anybody at all that might have, a, might have the, power, the powerhouse couple in here. MTG again. I don't think I attacked uh, Jacob, so... That Harima will bring in a lot of damage reduction, but, but it's not going to affect his A2. So that's what we want to see here again. We have UDK. We're going to deal with him. Not a problem. I will let him buff. I will let him do whatever they need to do. Let's, let's put him to sleep. Hey, don't, don't you be nasty to my, uh, to my Wukong, please. Yeah. Okay. So we're taking the turn first. We're going to go uh, A1. Okay. Reaction on there. Strengthen. Veil, that already brings damage reduction. Uh, A1. I want to use the A2. So we're going to ignore the, the shield. We're going to ignore the Strengthen. We're not going to ignore the damage reduction from... Actually, we... No, we're not. We're not going to ignore the damage reduction from the Veil, no. Because that's not a passive thing. That's something separate uh, on, uh, on Duchess. One hit. Okay. Did we manage to, to do two hits? I think we did, but... Having such a big shield, it doesn't really show the HP properly, but look, you can see the HP is pretty low on them now, and what keeps them alive is the shield right now. Okay, this will be the last, the last fight in here, guys. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's nasty. That was a nasty, nasty damage. Let's get some shield back. I wish we would get some more healing out of the, the champion, so right now we can go... Uh, a3, block the revive on UDK, extra turn, one hit, and two hits, Harima went down, Duchess survived. This is a super tanky team, so Jacob has an extremely, extremely tanky team, guys, just so you know. Just so you know. That's why I attacked him, because I'm, I'm well aware of how tanky is his team. So we have the A2 available again, because she used the A1 and decreased the cooldown of the skills. Another hit, we took zero damage from that counter attack, which is amazing. So whenever they will counterattack on us like this, uh, we're going to be more than, uh, more than fine. A1 again, decrease the cooldown of skills. 
Oh, we just died. That's not a problem because you know what we're going to do? We're going to revive with her right now. So check this out. It's, it's good that it finally happened. So revive, decrease the Termiter on them, 100% Termiter. So now we can just go in like this again. One and two. Harima down, Duchess is stunned, and we are bringing home the victory finally, okay? Not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby. So I think the new, the new couple is pretty, pretty good. I feel like maybe against a strong team with Marichka and Taras, we will struggle a little bit. But that's something that unfortunately I'm not able to, to test today and uh, really, really have a look at their full potential. Hopefully I'm going to summon him in-game and uh, that will give me a better understanding. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. As usual, appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.